There are nearly 10 million job openings in the U.S. right now. Almost everybody who wants the job can have one. I said that almost everybody can have a job. And that's by design of the Federal Reserve. The Fed has to monitor the labor market. Fed has a dual mandate, dual mandate, and it focuses both on price stability and also maximum sustainable employment. Maximum sustainable employment is the highest level of employment we can have without generating harmful inflation. The problem is that maximum employment target is much less obvious than the 2% inflation rate target. After all, the Fed itself says the max level of employment is not directly measurable more sort of amorphous thing. There isn't a number and there isn't one particular measure either. So then what does this mean? Labor market conditions are consistent with maximum employment. Here's why every American who wants a job can't have a job and what maximum employment really means. So the Fed aims for 2% inflation year over year, straightforward. But for the other half of the dual mandate, there's no magic numerical target. And the unemployment market just doesn't work like that. The Federal Reserve cannot directly control the unemployment rate. Really, what they're trying to eliminate is the part of the unemployment that goes up and down because of the cyclical nature of the economy. We're never going to have 0% unemployment, and that wouldn't make sense, right? Because there's always going to be movement in the job market. When Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said most of the members of the Federal Open Market Committee saw the labor market as consistent with maximum employment in 2022, he defined it as the highest level of employment that is consistent with price stability. And that is that is my personal view. But the problem is whether we can uh, uh, raise rates and, and move to less accommodative and even tight financial conditions without hurting the labor market. So what Powell is saying here is stable employment hinges on the Fed's actions on inflation, whether they raise or lower interest rates. Think of it like this. The Fed mans a sailboat. On deck, maximum employment rides along. Powell can raise or lower its price stability sales by pulling the interest rate cables that will help him steer the boat. So by controlling the sales of inflation, the Fed hopes to set the labor market in the right direction. The seas are pretty stormy, and the Fed has to steer around some pretty big boulders in the harbor. And so it makes it really hard because the wind might shift, and they may not realize the wind is shifting until it's too late. But I tortured that metaphor to death. In 2020, the Fed actually expanded its definition of maximum employment. And it said it would no longer preemptively raise interest rates just because the unemployment rate had fallen low. It would wait until it saw an uptick in inflation. That's when the Federal Reserve added broad-based and inclusive to its employment goals. That's sort of where you start thinking about how do different populations fare. Like, we, we know for a fact that generally, in any sort of recession, it's going to be the low-income workers who are hit the hardest, right? The Fed closely monitors this give-and-take relationship between unemployment and inflation, also known as the natural rate of unemployment. This shows the sustainable level of employment that doesn't cause inflation unemployment that is consistent with expected inflation equaling actual inflation. Part of managing this balance calls for the Fed to make tough choices for the labor market that could make workers lose their jobs. I think it's hard to sell to the public that what you're trying to do is make more people unemployed, right? No one wants to hear that. The economics is if you have so many people working and employers scrambling for workers, we'll get more inflation than we want. The Fed tries to keep perfect balance of jobs to inflation as steady as possible. Law doesn't have the word sustainable in it. The law just says maximum employment. We can't run experiments on the unemployment rate or inflation the way we can our hypotheses when it comes to physics and chemistry. The question is, how low can the unemployment rate go before it starts producing wage pressures and inflation? The short answer is we don't really know. Measuring employment starts with the headline unemployment rate, tracking how many people without jobs have actively looked for employment in the last four weeks. Usually looking at the unemployment rate is enough because most of the other measures of the labor market travel pretty close to it. Unemployment is only measuring that for people who are looking for jobs, right? There's lots of groups of people who are not counted as unemployed, but might actually want a job. And that's not going to show up in that unemployment number. So economists dig deeper. 
Well, one thing they're looking at is how many people are there who say they'd like a job, but they're not bothering to look because they don't think they could find one. That's called discouraged workers. They're looking at what is the labor force participation rate? That is, what fraction of the working age population is either working or looking for work? For example, the labor force participation rate declines when people stop looking for work, which happened amid the pandemic. But these numbers aren't inclusive of nuance. As one number does, is it's, it's masking all of the heterogeneity you can see, right? So different races, different genders, different age groups are going to have very different levels of participation. Right now, there are about two job vacancies for every one unemployed person. That's where the Job Openings in Labor Turnover Survey, aka the JOLTS Report, comes in. It's a look into who's been hired and who's been fired. So things like the number of quits that we're seeing, right? Or the number of job openings that are available. Plus, demographics shift the understanding of this data. That's a big reason why defining maximum employment is extra tricky. So economists track workers' ages. I think it's really important to zoom in on the prime age employment to population ratio. That is the share of people between the ages of 25 and 54 who are working and try to figure out what sort of structural unemployment for the U.S. is today, given the technology, given the policy landscapes, and given the demographic makeup of the country. And so it does change over time. So at any given point in time, maximum employment is defined by what the population looks like. There might be times where 4% unemployment is consistent with very low or falling inflation, and other times where it may be inflationary. So you just got to kind of, you know, taste the pudding and see, and see how it goes. The maximum employment goals shifts with the state of the economy, just as Powell said back in 2022. Maximum employment will evolve over time and through the course of the business cycle. In the particular situation we're in now, the level of maximum empl of employment that's consistent with stable prices may increase, and we hope that it will as uh, more people come back into the labor market. The interesting thing is that we were at maximum employment before the pandemic, and we had very little inflation. Our country is taking everything that COVID has to throw at us, and we've come back stronger. America is back to work. We were coming out of the pandemic, right? And all of a sudden, we got back to a point where unemployment was historically low, which is generally not what you would expect would happen. And I think a lot of that is just outside of the Fed's control. Of what the Fed can control, the central bank is aiming for what it calls a soft landing. Powell thinks that employers will reduce the number of vacancies in, in the economy. That is, they'll stop hiring without laying a lot of people off. And that's the path or the course to bringing the sailboat to shore without hitting any rocks. Jay Powell thinks the wind might hit the sails just right. The good news is that we do see labor force participation picking up again. And if companies find it easier to fill vacancies without bidding up wages so much and then passing on that cost to consumers and higher prices, perhaps, just perhaps, we may be able to sustain this low level of unemployment without inflation growing. The Fed is a bunch of people who are sitting around looking at all these numbers, trying to draw something from recent history, but also trying to understand how the world might be different today, and trying to make a judgment about how can they use the levers they have to steer us towards the maximum part of unemployment with the sustainable part, which they think means it can only be sustainable if we're at near somewhere near to 2% inflation. The harder question for the Fed is, how do you know when there's too many people working in the economy and therefore we have to raise interest rates so that some of them get laid off so we can avoid inflation?